I just received access to GPT-4 models via the existing OpenAI API. GPT-4 is cool, but the responses are quite slow compared to GPT-3.5. I was expecting that image input will be available with this release of GPT-4, but image input is yet to come in the future. Today, I will show how we can use GPT-4 for a chatbot. You might recall from one of my previous videos where I wrote a Python program using the GPT-3.5 Turbo model. Using that program, someone could repeatedly query OpenAI and get answers. I will be tailoring the same program. Actually, there is nothing much to tailor, which I'll show you in a few seconds. I wrote a while loop that keeps repeating to query OpenAI until the user enters the word quit. Whatever text the user provided, the program uploaded the text to OpenAI as a user message. This was done by leveraging this OpenAI chat completion .create method. We parsed the JSON response returned from OpenAI and printed it right here. That is excellent. Note again, I used GPT 3.5 Turbo model in the previous code. After I received the access to the GPT-4 model, all I have to do is change the parameter called model to GPT-4. That's it. My program now speaks with OpenAI using the GPT-4 model. The response time received from OpenAI is longer with GPT-4 compared to GPT-3.5. However, the responses from the GPT-4 model are cooler and more accurate. I should mention that this API key will not work anymore because by the time I will upload this video, I have removed this API key from my OpenAI account. You will need to use your own OpenAI API key here. In an earlier video, I demonstrated how you can get an API key from OpenAI. Ideally, a programmer should not directly write the API key in the code. Rather, the API key should be written somewhere else, such as it can be written in a file, and this program should read the API key from that file. Or the API key can be written in a database, and the program should use some authentication to access the API key from the database. Anyway, for this Python program, it does not matter much because it is just a prototype written for educational purposes. One drawback of this program is that the conversations are lost once the program terminates and you close the terminal or the command prompt. In the next video, I will show you how to save the chat history automatically in a text file from this program so that the conversation exchanges are not lost. Happy learning!